www.pageaccess.com, where the real show begins. Hey, buddy, this is Tom Jennings from BackstageAccess.com, and uh, I've got on the phone with me one of the greatest keyboardists ever, certainly uh, one of the tops in the progressive rock genre. Uh, Jeff Downs, he's been with Yes, he's been with Asia, but still with Asia, still with Yes, and, of course, uh, famous for being with the Buggles, who were the first band ever on MTV. Now, Jeff, your next project that you're working on is Yes is, get, is preparing to play three of their classic albums live, the Yes album, Going for the One, and Close to the Edge. Can you talk about the how much preparation you're going to have to do for that? It seems like a huge undertaking. Well, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's obviously probably more for me than anybody because, um, you know, half of the stuff I've not played before. So uh, it's going to, be, going to be quite a challenge, but, um, you know, I think that um, I know it's a familiar with the songs because... You know, the uh, classic album like right, Take Close to the Edge. You know, I don't think anyone in my generation was into music would really, you know, not be aware of that album and certainly not be aware of the song of it. But uh, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I think it's a, a big challenge and, um, you know, I'm not going to be shy of the challenge. And I think the other guys are really going to get into it as well. You know, it's, not, it's not something that they've done before either. Yeah, I mean those are those are three absolutely uh, classic albums. I guess the one you know a lot of people said they were kind of surprised that you decided not to do Fragile because you know Fragile contains uh, some pretty classic guest yes material. Do you know why they they chose say Going for the One over Fragile? Well, yeah, I think that um, I think the Fragile you know, obviously been the obvious choice, but then I think that um, you know Going for the One is a, is a kind of more obscure and. It has some, you know, real big, you know, little, uh, one major classic piece of it, Awaken, which is uh, something we've been playing anyway on the last couple of tours. So uh, I think that was one of the reasons to think about it. But I think that, you know, it, it, yes, it's never been about the obvious, and I think that, um, you know, picking going for the one was quite a brave move. And, and you've been on you've been on two albums uh, by Yes. You were on Drama, and then the most recent one, Fly From Here. Um, would would those be albums that maybe somewhere down the road you'd like to to see the guys do? I mean, Drama uh, amongst Yes fans is still uh, kind of a, a revered album. I mean, it was just just an, an incredible moment in the band's history. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's, it's kind of mature with time. You know, I think when when we first came out, it was a a certain amount of consternation about the advice from the pop world coming in. And um, even though, you know, uh, we've been schooled in music of all different things, I mean, it was just we, we happened to um, set our sights on, on, on you know, making studio pop records. But uh, I, I think that, that there were, you know, at the time there was a certain amount of consternation with these young guys coming in and taking over the, the mantle of yes, but... Um, I think when you, you look at it down the line, you know, the drama album is, is you know, it's a very deep album. You know, there's a lot of uh, dynamics in it. And it, it really held in a different era for you, I think. Yeah, and you know, it, it kind of leads me to another question that's that's somewhat related. When uh, I mean, if there was one member that seemed to be a constant for a long time, it was it was John Anderson, and uh, there's been a few other lead singers that have that have come and gone. But I was curious when John left the band, uh, was there ever any discussion with Trevor Horn coming back as the lead singer, either before uh, Fly From Here or afterwards when Benoit David uh, couldn't continue with the band? Um, I don't think so, really. I think that, you know, Trevor's had a, an amazing career as a producer, and that was really where, where his strength lay, I think. And, and um, I think it was something that he, he wouldn't have really taken on board either. I think that, you know, when, when we, you know, after the drama tours, I think that, that he kind of felt that it wasn't really for him, you know, and, um, you know, he was getting quite a lot of stick from, from uh, you know, certain of the real diehard fans and uh, uh, I think that you know, he felt more comfortable being in the studio um, which is you know he's terrific at I mean he's shown time and time again how, how good a producer he is so I don't think that really was um, 
you know, not much evidence, but I think, you know, when I had the opportunity to get out there and do, you know, go out with a band, I think that's really what kind of gave you a taste for it and, you know, formed my career in many ways, to go on and do Asia and, and other things. And, and speaking of Asia, uh, one of my absolute favorite all-time bands. I mean, you guys have, have put out some great material in the in the Wetton era, the Pain era, and then back to the to Wetton era. You, uh, f- the first question I'll have to do, we'll, we'll keep it tied to yes. When you were doing double duty on that tour where you were playing with both Asia and yes, I mean, how physically demanding was that for a musician? I mean, that's a long night. Well, I, I actually, at yeah, that time, I wasn't in yes because a lot of the late was the keyboard player. I mean, we did that tour. So really, it was Steve who was the only one who was having to, um, you know, flip flop between the two bands. And uh, um, it, it, I think it was pretty demanding for him because, you know, yes, we're doing, uh, Asia would do a one hour show and then would be a, you know, a half hour intermission or something. And then they'd go on and do another two, two and a half hours with yes. And that probably was, you know, very, very demanding. And, um, you know, all parts of Steve for being able to pull that off. Yeah, well, I apologize. I didn't realize you weren't uh, weren't in age or uh, in yes at that time. But I assume that 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 tour probably laid the groundwork for you going back. Um, in, in some ways, I think I think it really um, really came to fruition when uh, they involved Trevor and the Fly from Hell album uh, in the early stages, and um, Trevor was very very. Well, we've written some, some, some material for it, so he was really quite evident that I should be involved with to some degree. And uh, I think when I started working with him, Chris and Steve and Alan felt that you know, my contribution could be extended to across the whole album. Now, uh, Asia, uh, you put out uh, three albums recently with the uh, original lineup, and uh, all three of them, just fantastic. Each one of them I- improved upon the next. Uh, Steve Howe just recently announced that he's going to be devoting full time to Yes. You brought in a new guy named Sam Colson. Um, what can you tell me about Sam Colson as far as a guitarist compared to, say, Steve Howe? Well, he's a very different player from Steve. I mean, he's much more in the, in the, um, in the sort of modern school of guitars. I mean, Steve is very much an individual player, but he, you know, there's no one really sounds like Steve. He's a unique guitarist, and uh, you know, I think he obviously brought a great deal to Asia's sound. But um, uh, I think that you know, things move on. I mean, I, everyone respected Steve's decision for not wanting to go ahead with Asia. Um, you know, sometimes you you know you want to concentrate on other things, and uh, I don't think he's also got his um, uh, other projects that he wants to do and devote some time to them. Uh, and you know, for all parts of him that, that he. He, he stepped aside and, and this, this new guy came in and he, he is really, really good guitarist, you know. I must say a different style from Steve, but I think he had something to Asia's sound um, uh, in, in the future and, and uh, I think that both Carl and John are very keen to, to forge your head and uh, see where it goes. And, and of the, all the Asia members, you've, you probably had the longest relationship with uh, with John Wetton. I mean, you guys have put out albums together and everything. And and, uh, and and how would you compare working with John Wetton to say working with with Trevor Horn? Well, I think I, think, uh, I tend to work by one with bass players. I mean, if you look at most of my collaborations, yeah, it's been both Trevor and I. Um, Um, uh, you know, how we work together. So, 
I don't think they would lose really fans to be quite, quite comfortable, quite to do. Well, you guys have definitely put out some great music together, uh, without a doubt. And I, I've, I've read recently that Yes is playing and going into the studio um, with John Davison and working on a new album in the fall. Um, if I could just for a last question, just kind of wrap things up. You, you, you spoke earlier about uh, when Trevor Horn came into Yes that there was a there was a certain elements of the fan base that just rejected Trevor Horn as a singer. Um, have you seen any of that with John Davison, or do you think that there's been a little more acceptance because maybe there was a guy in between him and John Anderson, or or what really has been the the reaction with with? Well, I think I think there was a certain resentment towards Benoit for, for whatever reason. Benoit Gabriel, who was um, the singer in the band up until quite recently, and then um, you know I, I think that was somewhat misguided because I, I think that, that Benoit did off or not and. I think we did a very good job on the, um, on the Black and Hill album. Um, and it was only really, you know, when he, he got sick that, um, uh, you know, replacement was, was put on the table. But I think that, you know, John coming in, John Davison coming in has really been a, a big fresh air for everybody because, um, he, he brings in, uh, you know, very creative, he's a very creative musician. And, He's talented in a lot of areas, you know, he's a, a good guitarist and bass player and, um, you know, he has a good sense of musicality. And I think that that is really, uh, when people see Yes now with John in, it was much more of an acceptance, I think, of change that, um, you know, you can actually go forward and do an album. And people, uh, I think, were really looking forward to another Yes album with John Davidson. Yeah, and it'll probably be great coming off of uh, you know him really getting deep into the material with the Yes album, going for the one and close to the edge performing it. So. Yeah, I mean the thing is that John is a very much uh, he's, he's a very conscious Yes fan in, in many ways, and he, I think he, he has a very good understanding of the the history of the band and the material, uh, and he puts his own you know what was his faithful to. Uh, John Anderson's parts and, and, and the performances, um, he, he doesn't necessarily try to, to mimic him too closely and, um, you know, offers his own smart whilst paying respect to, you know, what were great, amazing pieces of music. And I, I think in many ways I find myself that also, bearing in mind that Yes had, uh, you know, had a four or five people played, um, you know, when I, when I play the parts of the Great Lord, Tony K, I try and um, pay homage to that. You know, what, you know, it was appropriate to the music when it was written and it was performed. Yeah, those are all those are all big shoes to fill. But uh, again, the band has has managed to uh, survive a lot of lineup changes and still put out some great music over the years. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that, uh, I think Chris was saying we were probably I think eighteen members of the Yes over the years, and we were. You know, it's not, not too bad, I suppose, over 44 years or however long it is now. I think it's almost that, that long. And um, uh, I think the, the, you know, it, it, it's proof that how great the music of Yes is, that it survived all those years and there's still a great concern. We're still making, uh, as I said before, you know, the art of making new music is something that is not important to say to the fans as well, but Yeah, you know, I had the chance to interview uh, Chris Squire last year, and he said, uh, you know, every single guy that's been in Yes has contributed something, and I, I think that was a uh, that was a very yeah, important I mean, it's, statement. It's really like a, it's like a, a classical composer, you know, or classical compositions, right? So, um, it, it, you know, certain players are important at certain times, and I think that um, you know, when when you read a book, you know, you, you go from one chapter to the next, and uh, Yes, it's just like a, a, a great big book of music. And, uh, you know, when you look at the different eras, certainly, um, you know, the eighth history of Trevor Ray, then, well, yes, it's a slightly different angle of music, but, 
play. Uh, I think it's all very valid. I think it, it shows that you know, the band's capable of developing and, and um, they're changing it, so. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much uh, again. I, I've been a, a huge Asia, Asia fan for a, a lot of years, a Yes fan for a yeah, lot of years, you. and uh, you know I've followed you and John Wenton's uh, career closely for oh gosh, it's got to be over thirty years now. And I know you've been playing a lot longer than that. Uh, well, thanks for thanks for calling, and um, I'll speak to you soon. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate. it. Hopefully, you guys will get close. So I can see those three albums perform. Those are those are pretty amazing yeah, albums. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it too. All right, man. Well, have a good one. Okay, thanks, thanks. you all, man. Yep, bye-bye. Bye.